In this video, we'll look at the Heathkit GR81 radio receiver. It was a two-based, regenerative-type, multi-band radio receiver built by Heathkit as an economy SWL, or shortwave listening radio. Most modern radios are what is known as a super heterodyne receiver. It's a relatively complex circuit that requires a handful of tubes or transistors to implement. In the early days of radio, simpler circuits were used that could be implemented using fewer tubes, sometimes as few as one. One of these was the regen or regenerative design. A regenerative receiver is based on the idea of increasing the gain of a circuit by coupling the output of an amplifier back to its input so that the signal passes through the stage many times, increasing the level of amplification. It originated in the early days of vacuum tubes where the gain of a single amplifier stage was not very high. If the gain is too high, the circuit oscillates, so a regeneration control is provided to adjust the level of feedback. Typically, feedback is performed using a small coil in the tuning circuit called a tickler coil, with regeneration controlled by a variable capacitor or resistor. For receiving amplitude modulated signals, the receiver is most sensitive when the regeneration level is adjusted to just below the level where it oscillates. CW Morse code and single sideband signals can be received by increasing the regeneration until the circuit oscillates. This acts as a beat frequency oscillator that mixes with the input signal so it can be heard. Regenerative receivers were relatively common up to the 1940s. The design continued to be used until the 1970s in low-cost shortwave receivers, often sold as kits. Heathkit was a famous manufacturer of electronics in kit form. A large part of their product line was shortwave and amateur radio equipment. At any given time, Heathkit typically offered several shortwave receivers in different price ranges. The GR81 fit into the low end and was billed as an economy shortwave radio. The GR81 is a three-tube regenerative radio that can receive on four frequency bands. Band A, 140 to 560 kilohertz, long wave. Band B, 560 to 1730 kilohertz, the AM broadcast band. Band C, 1.73 to 5.5 MHz short wave, and Band D, 5.5 to 18 MHz short wave. It was sold as a kit. One of my Heathkit catalogs reports it is taking about six hours to build. It has an internal loudspeaker and a jack for headphones. It runs on 120 volts AC, consumes about 30 watts, and weighs just under 10 pounds. It has connectors for a short or long external antenna and ground. The set was made from 1961, the year I was born, to 1972. It sold for between $20 and $30 over the years it was produced. In my 1971 Heathkit catalog, the GR81 was listed at $29.95. In the same catalog, Heathkit was offering various models of shortwave receivers, including the GR64 at $42.50, GR54 at $89.95, GR78 at $129.95, and the SB-104 at $259. This was the only regenerative receiver that Heathkit offered other than the EK-2 which was sold as part of a basic radio course and became a superhet receiver at the completion of the course. The front panel has controls for power and volume, regeneration level, band selection, main tuning, and fine tuning. The front panel is in the standard Heathkit shade of green. The main tuning has a 1.8 to 1 vernier reduction, and the fine tuning offers an additional half turn of tuning control. A pilot lamp indicates when power is on. On the rear panel are jacks for ground and for short and long antenna inputs. With regenerative receivers, it's important to use a good antenna and ground. It also has a standard AC power cord. This unit still has the original Heathkit model number sticker.
Taking a look inside, you can see it uses a metal chassis as it was standard at the time. The circuit uses three tubes. A 1287 detector and audio amplifier, a 50C5 audio output amplifier, and a 35W4 rectifier. There's a power transformer as well as a large power supply filter choke and a multi-section electrolytic capacitor. Somewhat unusual, the pilot lamp runs on the high voltage and only lights once the rectifier tube has warmed up and high voltage is present. Watch out, high voltage is present here when the unit is on. Also visible are the speaker and tuning capacitor. The headphone jack circuit is a little unusual. When headphones are plugged in, they're in series with the speaker. But because headphones are typically much higher impedance, the speaker audio is then almost zero. If you plug a speaker into the headphone jack, both speakers will operate at about the same level. Underneath the chassis, you can see all wiring is point to point. Each of the four bands has a separate fixed tuning coil. With this circuit, no alignment is needed or even possible. The dial is not particularly accurate, but pretty good considering there's no calibration. There's a fuse, as well as a holder with a spare fuse. This variable capacitor is the fine tuning control. A transformer isolates the circuitry from ground, making it safer than many other low end radios. The tube filaments are still in series though, so if the filament is open on any tube, none of them will light. Let's try out the receiver on band D, the higher shortwave band. In the evening with an external antenna, you can typically pick up many commercial shortwave broadcast stations. The setting of the regeneration control is critical, being set just before oscillation starts to get maximum sensitivity. The level at which this occurs varies as the frequency changes, so tuning a station involves correctly setting the tuning, fine tuning, regeneration, and volume controls. Amateur radio stations using CW or single sideband can also be received, but the selectivity is not very good, so the signals can be hard to separate from others. For these signals, the regeneration control needs to be turned up to the point where it starts to oscillate. It also receives the AM broadcast band. You still need at least a short piece of wire to act as an antenna to receive local stations. I found the receiver was not very sensitive on the long wave band, band A, However, there's very little activity on this band these days. I wanted to have one regen radio in my collection and had been looking for a GR81 to show up on eBay at a reasonable price for a couple of years. I bought this one in November 2013 from another Canadian on eBay. When received, it was working. The seller packed it well with styrofoam and bubble wrap and even put two of the tubes in bubble wrap. There was no manual, but I found three copies of a partial manual on the internet. All appear to be scans of the same original. The plastic feet on these units are often broken or missing, but mine has all of them. It also has all the original knobs. Some units had a pointer on the fine-tuning control, but others do not. This appears to be a design change made over the years. This unit had some corrosion on the chassis, but nothing serious. One nut and bolt were missing from a tube socket and were replaced. Often the paper capacitors on radios of this vintage have become electrically leaky. This radio only has one paper cap and it seemed to be okay so I kept it original. There are three electrolytic caps in one can. They also can go bad but these ones seem to be working fine so I did not replace them. I had some intermittent issues which seemed to be due to a loose tube socket. I cleaned the tube's pins and tightened up the socket contacts.
In summary, the GR81 was a low-end affordable radio built as an economy model and compared to regen receivers from other manufacturers, it was a little better for a number of reasons. It featured an isolation transformer for safety. The power circuit was fused and even has a holder for an extra fuse. It provided a fine tuning control. It has two different antenna inputs and it has a solid and quite nice looking metal case. Compared with higher end receivers, the radio is not very sensitive or selective, suffers from hum and is tricky to adjust. Tuning is not very accurate. However, for $20 to $30, it was an affordable way for someone to get introduced to shortwave listening and the satisfaction of building a radio yourself. Many people started their interest in radio with this or a similar unit, later upgrading to more sophisticated and expensive equipment. Some people continue to make homebrew regenerative receivers, often using field effect transistors, and a few companies still sell solid state regen receiver kits. Here are a few books that describe how to build homebrew regenerative receivers of various types. The GR81 is covered in Chuck Penson's book, Heathkit, A Guide to Amateur Radio Products. It's also listed in the book, Shortwave Receivers Past and Present, in the Heathkit chapter. Both of these books are out of print, but are available on the used market. If you're interested in Heathkit products, you may enjoy my new book, Classic Heathkit Electronic Test Equipment. It focuses on Heathkit's line of test equipment, including meters, power supplies, oscilloscopes, signal generators, and many others. It's available at lulu.com for $19.95. Thanks for watching, and please check out my other YouTube videos on Heathkit radio and test equipment.